Hello and welcome to Inside the Americas. I'm Delano D'Souza. Coming up on the show this week. Dozens of people dead in northwestern Canada as record high temperatures grip the region. Next, is there life out there? We take a look at a new U.S. intelligence report on unidentified flying objects. Out of 144 UFO sightings, researchers could explain just one. And a drop in tourism during the coronavirus pandemic turns out to be a blessing in disguise for Alaska's whale population. But first, dozens of people have died in Canada since last week due to record high temperatures. Temperatures have hit highs of over 46 degrees Celsius. According to the Met Office, the ongoing heat wave is a result of a pressure system which isn't moving. Brian Quinn reports. Vancouver broiling amid a historic heat wave. The average daily high temperature here for June and July, a balmy 21 degrees Celsius. In recent days, that's been more than doubled, with nearby Lytton breaking Canada's all-time national temperature record at 49 and a half degrees Celsius. Western Canada is being baked under what's known as a heat dome that has already caused hundreds of deaths. There's going to be a lot of people and going to be ending up in the hospital and being really, really sick from this because they don't, some of them don't know how to look after themselves. Heat near the Earth's surface typically dissipates as it rises, but when high pressure systems form in the upper atmosphere, that heat is pushed back downward, further warming as it's compressed closer to ground level. The cycle creates a tall dome of recirculating hot air whose high pressure pushes out sea winds and clouds that could bring relief. The effect is being felt further south in the U.S.'s Pacific Northwest as well, with record high temperatures and a number of fatalities. This is not a British Columbia problem, it's not a Canada problem, it is a global challenge. We now have to redouble our efforts to address uh, global warming and the consequences on, on people, on, on communities and on the landscape. While heat domes aren't directly caused by climate change, they are made worse by droughts more directly linked to global warming, and they're getting worse as the planet as a whole heats up. North America's latest heat wave is also raising fears that this year's wildfire season could be longer and more severe than ever before. Authorities in Miami say there is still hope survivors can be found alive as faint sounds can be heard inside the pile of rubble. So far, investigators have not determined what caused the section of the building to collapse. Attention, however, has focused on an engineer's report from 2018 detailing structural deficiencies. Next, a long-awaited U.S. intelligence report on unidentified flying objects was largely inconclusive. Out of 144 UFO sightings between 2004 and 2021, researchers could explain only one, meaning alien spacecraft can't be ruled out. Emerald Maxwell reports. Oh my gosh! This 2015 U.S. Navy infrared footage shows one of the 144 sightings of a mysterious flying object in the Pentagon's unclassified report. It could explain only one of these sightings. As for the others, the American Army has just one certainty. They have ruled out that these things that were seen by the Navy pilots were some sort of secret American government program. That was out there as one possibility, and that's been eliminated. All 144 incidents were recorded between 2004 and this year and displayed unusual flight movement. They're all going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots to the west. The report says this could be due in some cases to sensor glitches or poor pilot analysis. Birds or drones could also confuse a radar. What the Pentagon fears most, though, is that it's a system developed by a foreign power. The highest probability is it's a threat observation program. You know, if these were tactical jets from another country that were hanging out up there, it would be a massive issue. U.S. intelligence agencies fear, for example, that China or Russia are testing hypersonic technologies because some of these unidentified objects moved extremely fast. The Pentagon report's language avoids explicit mentions of possible extraterrestrial life, but it doesn't rule it out either. Neither do some American pilots. Clear footage. The way that it was maneuvering, the way it was accelerating and also hovering, uh, it, it seemed to have capabilities that 
our systems would not have been able to display or, or keep up with. So certainly in that moment, uh, there was some shock and awe. So the nature of these incidents remains unexplained. And according to the chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, they've only increased over the past three years. Brazil says it will suspend a $324 million contract for a COVID-19 vaccination from India's Bharat Biotech. This after the country's President Jair Bolsonaro was caught up in accusations over irregularities surrounding the deal. The purchase of 20 million inoculations has proven to be a headache for Bolsonaro, who has denied any wrongdoing. Mexico's uh, Supreme Court has moved to decriminalize the recreational use of marijuana. The decision now adding pressure on the country's Senate to approve a legalization bill. The law is expected to mark a major shift in Mexico, which has witnessed years of violence between feuding cartels. Activists celebrate outside the Mexican Supreme Court after judges move a step closer to decriminalizing the recreational use of cannabis. Hoy es un día histórico para las libertades. Después de un largo camino, esta Suprema Corte consolida el derecho al libre desarrollo de la personalidad para el uso lúdico recreativo de la marihuana. Eight of the 11 judges backed the decision, ruling that the drug's current prohibition was unconstitutional. In March, Mexico's lower house of parliament approved a bill legalizing the recreational use of cannabis, but it's since stalled in the Senate. The court ruling means all adults should now be able to apply for permits to cultivate and consume their own cannabis, but it doesn't decriminalize production, possession or transportation of the drug. Hemos aclarado y hemos dicho que esto no es de plantas, esto no es de gramos, es de derechos humanos. But others were more cautious, saying the ruling would leave users in a legal vacuum until legislation was passed by lawmakers. Habría un área gris porque no hay legislación, eh, la Suprema no legisla, ellos solo están tachando artículos que son inconstitucionales. The legalization drive is aimed at curbing drug-related violence that claims thousands of lives in Mexico each year and at striking an economic blow to the cartels that run the illegal drugs trade. But crime gangs are increasingly moving away from marijuana towards harder drugs like cocaine and heroin as more lucrative sources of income. Next, we're taking you to Alaska, a state where soaring mountain peaks and sprawling forests dominate. The coronavirus pandemic has, however, been something of a blessing in disguise, in particular for the state's whale population. When tourism stopped, nature filled a void. Andrew Hillier reports. It's known as America's last frontier where only seals and bears are allowed onto the pristine islands and beaches. In the water, with the ocean stretching out far ahead of them, whales frolic majestically. This is Alaska's Glacier Bay National Park a UNESCO World Heritage Site that humans can only visit on board boats. And the perfect feeding ground for humpback whales. Not long ago, at least two cruise ships would sail into Glacier Bay every day. That ended with the coronavirus pandemic. It's probably been a quiet year for the animals. No boats. This boat was not operating last year. No cruise ships last year. No tour boats last year. We weren't sure about this boat, how to conduct operations safely this year. Glacier Bay scientists have quite literally heard the change by laying acoustic sensors on the seabed. The sounds of the ocean are picked up by Chris Gabriel, a marine biologist who monitors what's going on underwater. Before the pandemic, this was what she often heard. 
That is the sound of the propeller and a little bit of the engine. It's very disturbing, yeah, to, yeah, to me. Like, I turn it down. I have a speaker here, and I can turn it down. Now, this is what she can hear. Whales coordinating an attack on a school of fish. <laughs> so if we were hearing this out on the ocean, about 10 seconds later, all the whales would come to the surface together. And sometimes after that, you get them chattering back and forth like, oh, we did a great job. Mm -mm -mm. You know, that's great. <laughs> Glacier Bay Sandlands opening floor Chris plan. Gabriel spends much of her time crisscrossing the bay. The waters here are rich with fish. Unable to see, the whales use sounds to communicate and coordinate their attacks. With less noise pollution, the pandemic has been hugely beneficial to them. Whales evolved in a quiet ocean, and the human presence and vessel noise has only been around for about the last 200 years. So if we were having a conversation in a noisy place, we would um, speak louder to each other. We might use really simple words and cut out all the nuance. We think that whales uh, do a lot of those same things. It's one of the um, inspiring things I've seen during the pandemic is just how quickly nature will just fill in the gaps, you know, where humans leave a little bit, bit more space. As a result, mothers will let their offspring swim further because they know they can hear each other. That allows the whales to hunt better. In 2020, a record 12 calves were recorded in Glacier Bay, a first in years. That's it for this edition of Inside the Americas. From all of us on the team, thank you very much for watching.